We are back on the streets of Chicago and ready for racing. And Chris, just great to see again these elite athletes getting back on these courses in the United States and even a bigger smile will come when we see the masses behind them because this is really just more than just watching these professional athletes compete. It is the spirit and what these major events represents where everyone gets to follow their heroes and uh, try to also cover this marathon distance today. A marathon is a huge deal for anyone. I, I've always felt like uh, you were talking about Michael Jordan. The vast majority of us are never going to dunk a basketball, but people can run a marathon and, and it's, it's an equally big uh, achievement. And so we're, we're kind of seeing these guys shaking out a little bit. It doesn't look like it's going out super fast right now. So the man on the course, next up the women. We saw McFadden going off the line really quickly. She looked like she was starting 100 meters there. She might be going out to really just establish herself and break away right from the beginning and time trial it. And that looks like exactly what she is doing. Eight times the Chicago Marathon winner had that great stretch of seven consecutive victories between 2011 and 2017. Also picked up that win in 2009. So the they quickly already break to a leader and a chase pack. 45 seconds in to the women's race. You know, Paul, the start is always a little difficult because you're so excited and you want to just pop off that line. But the reality is you have over two hours of racing ahead of you and you really just need to warm up into it. But it's tough. And they held them at that line for a long time. They were out there for about 10 minutes. So they're all excited to just get their legs moving right now. Yes, I can hear you. And early on in this race, there is pacing in this race in Chicago. They dropped it for a while, brought it back. And, you know, a lot of the intrigue over the last 24 hours was who was going to be pacing, who was going to be paced, and at what pace? Yeah, and there was a lot of back and forth on the weather and how much they needed to adjust their times for. And so we see a pacemaker out front here. No one's really running right up on him, uh, but they have him in their sights. It's really early on. Over on the far left side of your screen of the sunglasses, that's Chris Derrick, also among the top Americans in the field, a Chicago land native, grew up in nearby Naperville, Illinois. And the masses now onto the race course as well. And not sure if you can consider part of the masses, but one notable name in that field is American Shalane Flanagan, who is attempting to run all of the major marathons during the course of this crazy sequence. And so far has successfully maneuvered her way through Berlin and London running even faster in that second race. And now the challenge of two marathons in two days as she will also get back to her roots in Boston, Massachusetts for the race tomorrow. Well, only one woman in Chicago has ever run under 16 minutes for the first 5K among the fastest ever run in Chicago. And that was Bridget Koske who ran 15.28 in her world record effort. So nine seconds on the other side of that slower, but that's slower to the fastest time we've ever seen run in the event. So very hot running so far. And similarly, Tamru up alongside, you know, typically the pace setter kind of leads you and allows you to kind of be behind them and maybe get a benefit of a little bit of, uh, of kind of wind deflection, but He's seemingly running side by side and having conversations with the guy every so often. Yeah, he seems like he wants to see the open road. He doesn't want to sit behind. You know, he ran two or three marathons, excuse me, in 2019. And so maybe he's just excited to get out here. He knows he's fit. He he has a great history in marathons. He's new to the marathon relatively, but he has had very successful 
attempts every time and he really wants to run alongside and feel like he's controlling this effort and not being controlled. At the 5K mark, Galen Rupp was in eighth, and you can kind of see him if you stretch your eyes back to the back of the field, and he's kind of lost a little bit of connection with that group. And you can see on the singlets now, the wind's you know, definitely noticeable at this point of the race. Yeah, and that, that could be a little deceiving seeing Galen back there. They are running quick up front, and he knows that it's a little warmer. He knows that it's windy. He knows this course well. And perhaps he says, hey, you know, I know what I'm ready to do today, whether it's 206, 207, and I know that's going to land up on the podium as the race develops. And so I'm going to really stick to what I'm going to do. And I think the athletes that do that today are going to have the most success. The athletes that really run within themselves and control what they can control and not really take a big risk and run someone else's race they'll do better i think wheelchair racers a little bit further down on the course in fact they're more than a half hour in we had five men through 10k kind of in that lead pack as we now get them through 15k it's down to a quartet with roman chuck who pike and smith she is running right up on him and she looks very relaxed, controlled. Her arm carriage is really light and everything, her stride is nice and open. Her arm carriage is light. She looks really good. I'm just really shocked at how fast she's running given the day, given the year she's had. Um, it's interesting to see her sort of risk all of this and sort of take it from the beginning. You know, she's way up in front and now she's, you know, she'll be up there and having to maintain that without the ability to work with other teammates, to work with other women, to have someone to look towards. But she knows this. She's been in this position before. She is the reigning world champion. She knows how to run. And so she has decided that she feels good and that she wants to get out here and run a fast pace. Well, she's won four of six completed marathons in her career, but was also on record when she DNF'd in uh, Sapporo that she did not like the warm weather in the Olympics, so elected to shut it down there. Meantime, those are the official splits at 10 kilometers, 29.15 for the lead group, and everyone now packed together with the exception of Galen Rupp there in the background. You know, and Rupp is in, in a bit of a tough position. There's no one behind him. We just see daylight after we see him. And so what does he do? Does he keep maintaining his pace? Or does he run a mile a little bit quicker than he wants to and attach himself back onto that pack? The optics are hard here to see just how far back he is, but it doesn't seem like they're gaining too much ground on him. And so sometimes you have to roll that dice and sort of go with it. But at this point, he just really doesn't want to lose contact and lose that eye, eye line to them. He was 10 seconds officially back of the leaders at 10K, and that occurred just a little while ago. Meantime, it is not an issue of seeing anyone in front of her. It's the distance between the leader, Tatiana McFadden, and the rest of the field of the women's wheelchair race, and that has steadily grown, Chris, from about 30 seconds after 5K to a little less than a minute after 10K. Has only put on another 20 seconds or so, but still a sizable advantage, one minute and 19 seconds over the next nearest competitor. But Sarah Hall back working her way down this stretch of Chicago asphalt. And just playing the waiting game. Yeah, Sarah Hall has decided to, to back off on her original intention of a sub 220 effort. You know, she really is respecting the weather conditions and she's here, she adjusted her time, and, and that's always difficult mentally, right? To a, a day or two before a race, really make these adjustments when you've had your eye on something, all of your training's been towards something. But she felt like it wasn't worth the gamble at this point. She's still hoping to finish at the top of this podium. And so in an effort for her to do that, she's gonna have to have a really strong second half, and she's gonna have to hope that the pace up front catches up and uh, that Chip Nutic falters a little bit in that second half. Well, and the first woman to fall victim to that was the Ethiopian Meseret Baleta, who was up in those top three. She's now fallen to fourth. That was at the 15K mark. We'll get another indication of where things are and, and, and in that distance between them as, as well. As Sarah's Hall has now moved up into third after 15K. Chepnyetic just coming through 
the 20K mark moments ago. This 2021 Chicago Marathon, the first major U.S. Marathon in more than two years. One of the things that's an issue here, Paul, is that, oh, here we go. Marcel is going to the front. Is he going to take a, take a pull or is he putting in a surge? Looks like he's just going to the front to take a pull. It's basically like a 25% advantage being in back. It's a whole lot easier, but when someone throws in a surge like that, it's hard to react to that surge. We see Aaron Pike put in a spot of bother here. Hoping to get back on. John Boy Smith has been dislodged as well. Yeah, John Boy Smith couldn't react to that push. Aaron Pike now seems to be falling behind. And just as Chris predicted at the outset of this broadcast, we thought it would come down to arguably the two best men in this event over the last several years. And a look behind by the silver bullet. And he realizes once again, the youngster, Daniel Romanchuk, not ready to give up his title in Chicago. Who threw in enough of a surge to dislodge the other two, but not Daniel, not Romanchuk. And that's gonna be the biggest, the, the biggest question right there is just how much does he have to do or what can he do that he doesn't have to face Romanchuk on that final hill. And look at Romanchuk's wheel, like right underneath the, uh, the right side of the wheel. He's trying to get as much benefit off the back. You are, you get as close as you possibly can. You're really not supposed to be in between the, the frame and the wheel, but it does happen at times. And uh, yeah, Romanchuk looks really, really solid, but also Hoog looks really solid as well. These guys are, these guys are picking it up. And it's just, it, it's really, this is really impressive just to see how fast they are going, what kind of speeds they're main, maintaining. This is probably over 20 miles an hour right now. Well, been drafting for a while, but now Romanchuk comes alongside Hoog. It's actually, they got close enough that they had to take a stroke off because they didn't have enough room to, to, to hit the push rings there. Now, Daniel Romanchuk went to the front, but he went to the front. He didn't throw the surge in. He didn't cause the stress that Marcel did, that Hoog did when he went to the front in the previous move. Right now, it's tough to tell who's gonna be in the best position. I think that Daniel, if we get to the hill, Romanchuk probably is in the best position, but this is where don't count out Hoog because he is a tactician. He has the experience. He has been the top guy in the world for a long time, and he, he knows how to make it work. So they are approaching that hill right now. This is where it's gonna get super, super exciting. Final stretch of the men's wheelchair race. Now just a bit of a gap breaking open between Romanchuk and Hoog. And now they got to carry that momentum with 400 meters to go, trying to crest the hill. It's cresting the hill and then it flattens out before the finish as well. So this is this is where you've got to appreciate what, what Roman Chuck does. I mean, he just blew up the best guy in the world on that hill. And he didn't look like his momentum stopped. His cadence didn't slow at all. He just, uh-oh, and it looks like he's locking up going around that turn. Well, Got to recreate that momentum. Yeah. Let's see if he has enough space. Now looking from the front, it looks like he does. The silver bullet who has won every stop on this quick and short world marathon major tour in 2021 is going to give up his first race as Roman Chuck defends in Chicago. Gotta love head-to-head -head matchups in sport, and that delivered there. First to congratulate Roman Chuck is Hoog, and I guess the first thing he might say to him is, congratulations, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. That was an impressive move on that final hill. We had to, we kept thinking, is Hoog going to try to do something before he gets to that hill because Roman Chuck climbs better than anyone, and he demonstrated that he dropped Hoog 
almost effortlessly. It was absolutely amazing. That just doesn't happen. She is one of the most amazing athletes, and it'll, it, you'll actually get a bit of perspective, I think, when she turns here just to see how she climbs, if she is willing to actually put herself in that. The, as, as we mentioned, the, the TV does not do this hill justice. This is a significant hill, and, and you can see just based on, on the power that they're having to put into the ring just how hard that is. Effectively one lap of a standard track to go 400 meters as puts her head down and gets those wheels turning towards the top of this bridge that will carry her into Grants Park and then the sharp right turn to the finish line back about 95 seconds behind at the 40 kilometer split were another pair of Americans Yen Huang and Jenna Fessmeyer could be a U.S. sweep in the women's wheelchair here if that product holds in the closing moments here. But the hill has been crested, and now the wheels are a little bit easier to turn, and the last thing to maneuver is this final turn to the finish. Yeah, I think that she is probably, this is elation, this is relief, and it's just plain excitement that getting to the finish line first, there is something so different about getting to the finish line first. And she hasn't done it in a long time, and she's going to do it right now. So coming into the final few pushes of her wheelchair, all alone from the start of the race, Tatiana McFadden is back on top in Chicago. This is the next step in her getting back to being on top of the world. So make it nine Chicago titles, 24 world marathon major titles. You throw in some of her other accomplishments at other major state stages, certainly the most decorated woman an American woman in the sport but with a few more strides to crest this bridge and then be able to work down to that final turn and then he will see the finish line you see 300 meters to go less than a lap and a couple of more looks back his coach is going to scold him later. He needs to just focus ahead, and he can really enjoy this moment. He sees that he's done enough, and now, you know, what a dream come true to win a major marathon and such a prestigious one as the Chicago Marathon. And we talked about it, and we may see it evidence tomorrow in Boston and on through the other races leading to New York City with so many races in this fall, so many opportunities for breakthrough moments for some of these major marathon hopefuls. And now the celebration begins because for the very first time, the 24-year-old Sefatura of Ethiopia will now be a world major marathon champion. He wins in Chicago. And a gutsy performance by Galen Rupp. Winner in 2017, that disappointment of a DNF in 2019. And while he would have wanted the win, certainly a podium finish here in 2021 is going to be something he'll take away as a positive. Absolutely. Galen Rupp has to be pleased with this effort. At 35 years of age, he returns to the top of the sport, second at a world marathon major after a difficult Olympic Games. This for him is a race he was within seconds of his personal best, and he proves that he is back to the man he once was, and he's ready to take that now moving forward. So Eric Kiptanui gets the celebration of third place. And Galen are up. And Bates in second. Sarah Hall now in third. And Kiplagat, who was running hot early in the race, has dropped back into fourth. And she's 30 seconds behind Hall now, so we're also Closing in on a potential two American women on the podium. That hasn't happened since Des Linden and Sarah Sellers went one and two in 2018. And it's not happened here in Chicago since 1994. So some history in the making here. But Chip Yedich is going to enjoy 
that championship opportunity to stand high atop the podium if she can just get herself up and over this final hill. Well, she's done it the hard way, but she has done it, and she took control of this race early on, you know, decided I'm the one to beat today and really made all the women hurt early on. And now she gets to turn the final turn here when she gets up that hill and she gets to enjoy the reward of all of the hard work she's put in today. You see the sign with 300 meters to go and it gets an awful lot easier now on this side of the bridge that will carry her into Grant Park and to the finish line. 27 year old making her first ever racing appearance in the United States and it will result in her first win on U.S. soil and an Abbott World Marathon major to boot. So after the disappointment in Tokyo where she was not able to finish coming in as one of the favorites as the reigning world champion, Ruth Chepnetich is back on track and is going to take the victory here in Chicago as the professional women's winner. From Kenya, Ruth Chepinjetic! Congratulations, Ruth! And just under 2.22.30 in taking the victory. Ruth Chepinjetic is the winner of the 2021 Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Finish line probably never felt so good for her. This momentum will help her so much, and what a great run out of her today. And not only does it open a lot of doors for her internationally, but it will also put her on the all-time top 10 list of American marathoners on a day where there was a hint maybe of going after Dina Castor's American record. It will not happen on this day, but Emma Bates, as she closes to the finish line, 224.29 is number nine all-time performer in U.S. history. And that's where she'll be on the list after a second place finish here in Chicago. Emma Bates. Well, that's fun, Paul. You could see her smiling the way in. She knew the significance of the day, and she got to enjoy that final stretch there, knowing all the hardship she's come through to come here on a difficult, warm, and windy day and run a personal best and be second in the Chicago Marathon. And Sarah Hall now cresting the bridge and benefited from having her pace setters stay with her and keep her engaged in this race through the end. Absolutely, but I'm impressed with how she's had to reframe this race multiple times. She had to reframe it when she saw the weather that it wouldn't be an American record attempt. She had to reframe it in the middle of the race when she saw the lead slipping away from her and reframe it again now as she's struggled in this latter race stages and had to really fight to get herself to that finish line. Well, it may have been a struggle, but in the context of the opportunity presented here for American women marathoners, Two of the three podium finishers from Team USA. Emma Bates finishing second, and now Sarah Hall. Another podium finish, this time third in Chicago. And Scott Olberding of the U.S. crossing the finish line. Jason Parks, Abdusamid Abdi, Matt Hensley, Roman O'Shea, all finishing. The bank oh, we really can see that she marathon. left it all out there. That's one of the things that's so always been so fun to watch Sarah Hall race. She's always going to go for it. She's always going to leave every little bit of herself out on the course. And still able to also show what we've seen so many times in her career, that sportsmanship and support for other runners. And, and there is Emma Bates. And you see that reaction. Second place, amazing. She's first to ask how Emma did. Absolutely. And that's the camaraderie of running, right? We all appreciate each other. These athletes appreciate each other. They know how hard they've all worked, and they're excited for each other. And what a great day for the U.S. to put two women on that podium. It's a special day and a day they'll remember for a long time. And here in fourth place, another American. 
Here at Amato coming across the line, a decidedly American theme of success on the women's side at the 2021 Chicago Marathon. 